Where the hell have you been? I got here as fast as legally possible. Do you have my will? Yes, sir. <coughs> I think we should take him to the hospital. No. George wants to stay at home. Reminds him of his wife and his daughter. The will. I want to change it. Uh, Stacy, could you please leave us? Thank you. I, George Woods, declare this to be my last will and testament. I revoke all wills and codicils previously made. <laughs> to be read 10 years after you're deceased. That's not typically how it's done, but I don't see any Do reason. it. What if they find Mona by then? Then read it immediately. And the envelopes? Notarize them as soon as possible. I understand. All under the 10 year term. <laughs> Stacy! Charlie, what the hell do you want? Listen, you get a letter from Uncle George's lawyer? Yeah, so? Yeah, we need to talk. About what? Your wife, Mona. Go ahead. Found this old photo of Mona. Thought you might want to check. Actually, you know what? I'll show you two at the cabin. Later. We, we. Charlie. I'll be home as soon as this will is read. Just tell Jacob, tell Jacob I'll make the game. Yes, I just have to take care of a few things up here first. Love you.
see us. Mr. Pearson? That's me. It's good to see you. I know. It's been quite a while. Sorry for the intrusion, but you know, this was Mr. Wood's idea. Oh, there's no need to apologize. I completely understand. Besides, this was George's place anyway. Oh, please, come in, come in. to see you too, Brenda. <laughs> oh, and who is this handsome young man? <laughs> this is my grandson, Jeff. Mm -hmm. He was about oh, this tall when last you saw him. Right. It's been more than 10 years since George passed. Guess we got the whole friggin' weekend for a little dysfunctional family reunion. So, what do you think, Scott? I don't have time for this shit, Charlie. Mind if I show you a photo I found? What is this? I thought you said you had a photo of Mona. It's in the car. I'll show you that one later. Just found this baby stashed in here. <laughs> that woman? It's a total bitch. She tried to seduce Uncle George out of his cash. I caught them once before. George passed away a long time ago, Charlie. Whatever happened, happened. Thanks for your help on the side of the road. Sure. But just so you know, I've gathered everybody's dirt. So? So, get ready for the Woods family who done it Wheel of Fortune. I hate you. Everything's fine. Great. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, you that. Oh, yes. I took this picture. Catherine, do you remember this photo? <laughs> oh, nice. I was just telling Randy that we all haven't been together since this Halloween party. <laughs> Lots of great old photos around here. Right, Brenda? Please behave yourself, Charlie. Ah, uh, that's no fun. I think this gathering is going to be even better than the party. Thanks for hosting us, Brenda. Charlie, <laughs> stop causing trouble and come take a look at this. 
<clears throat> have you seen it before? Uh, I have. Then it disappeared. I thought Uncle George didn't like it, so he threw it away. Yeah, he was going to, but I brought it here. See, that's me. I'm the witch. <laughs> well, what did you wear, Charlie? Were you Casper? Uh, no, no way. I hate Casper. Randy, oh. you remember who Casper was at the party? Uh, me? No. I was completely drunk. I think I <laughs> slept through most of the party. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You snore like a dead hog when you're drunk. <laughs> I remember how to drive you home that night. All right, come on. Let's do oh, this. Oh, oh. Steady. Oh, here steady. we are. Hey. Good night, everybody! Woo! <laughs> In you go. Damn lawyer asked me a bunch of questions like I'm a criminal. If Nadia's not gonna get her cut, then we don't need to be here. Yeah, I agree. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm included in this. I thought Uncle George never liked me. You are always his favorite nephew, Randy. You and Charlie. Yeah, right. But Charlie's different. He worked for George. Me? That's Stacy. George treated me better as an employee than a nephew. No, wait, I take that back. I got diddly squat when I worked for the old man. Oh, but maybe you shouldn't blame that on Uncle George. I mean, you put it all up your nose. The old bastard owes me back pay. But you lost half the business. And Charlie, you burned me too, remember? I loaned you the money for that shady deal you put together. I never got any money back from you. Shut up, Brenda. I know all your dirty secrets. Sh shouldn't argue. I'm sure George left you all a little something, and of course, it's only fair to consider me as a part of So that. take all of his cash to your grave. Listen, Mr. Cocaine. I'm looking out for my grandson. I'm out of here. Me too. Hey, Mandy Bird. No hug for your Uncle Charlie? Um, later, Uncle Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Stay away from my daughter. Bigger. Yeah, me too. <sighs> Poor George. After his wife died, I told him to come over any time, and he took me literally every damn night for dinner. I couldn't get rid of him. So then you turned around and lived in his house. He was my brother. Hey, I'm blood too. We're all blood, except for Mrs. Jordan and Scott. Hey, I'm just here for Nadia. All right, when Mona. To get Nadia's cut. Uncle George obviously hoped Mona would have turned up by now. Oh, for God's sake. If Mona hasn't shown up for all these years, I don't think she's gonna show up tonight. I agree with Catherine. It's been more than 10 years since Mona disappeared. I once believed she might have gone looking for her mother. I'm not so sure anymore. Rima? Yes? Come in. Mona was clinging to her mother from the moment I met her. George immediately fell for those sad eyes. Just you errands and I'll be right back. Thank you so much for watching, Mona. Her mother must have been crazy. I, I know money was tight for her. I think she was from Iran or something.
Dear Mr. Woods, I cannot keep Mona. Please save her. And I would like to leave this necklace to her so she can remember her ancestors. The history of the necklace is long to remember. It has been handed down for generations. I took it from my mother before I came to United States. But I must go back to my country now. No one knows about Mona back home. Having a child outside of marriage is punishable by death. So I must leave her with the people I trust. If I can ever leave my country, I will come back for her. Your mother left you with us for a little while, dear. It's okay, kiddo. It's okay. George treated Mona like his own. did the Christian thing, took her to church, guided her homework like a real father. Very good father. So what someone else you need in there? You need a bird up in the tree, maybe? Draw a bird up here. Maybe a nest, a bird's nest. Yeah. Hmm. Have some eggs in it. George was ready to send Mona to college until Scott came along and took her away. Just leave me alone. I am so sick and tired of living in this old elephant house. I'm not even a kid anymore. I want my own life. You're too young to get married. Don't tell me what to do. You're not even my real father. I'm 18 years old. I can do what I want. I can live on my own. Mona! Back off, old freak. Mona, he's just after our money. <laughs> Pathetic. Who cares about your money? Just let me go. Yeah, that's right. Uncle George once asked me to take care of this business. Your cousin is hooked up with this person. Where he lives, his job, friends, family. Get something on him, all right? You didn't know about that, did you? You are so full of shit, Charlie. Mona begged me to marry her. Well, truth be told, Mona was pregnant. Okay. I don't know, but I'm pregnant. You sure it says? You know, uh, I can help arrange an abortion. No, I want this child. I want to know what being a mother is like. The connection to motherhood that I lost. One day she was gone. No one knew why or no one cared. Leave it. Trashing your paintings is not helping. I can do what I want. You can't anymore. You have a wife and a kid. Get a job and help out. You know, stop telling me what to do. All the time with your George imitation. Jesus, what's wrong with you? Mommy. Thank you. Yeah, but... I guess I'm mostly pissed at myself for not doing something to help her or even not being able to remember anything. Come on, Nadia. 
You were six years old. You know, I don't remember anything from when I was six. So, uh, what's after school for you, huh? Um, no idea. Travel, maybe? I don't know, you? Uh, I was thinking mechanic. You know, grandma's thinking college, but we'll see. Where do you want to go? Escape to a land warm and enchanting. Paradise, I guess. Well, then you should probably check out New Zealand. It's a pretty cool, enchanting place. My parents took me when I was younger. So you remember it then? <laughs> I remember thinking it was cool, but you know, I don't really travel too much, so. Well, I've never been anywhere, so. Well, if you do go, I recommend you bring a camera. And I'm not talking about your phone. I'm talking about get one like professionals use, you know, a real camera. Those cameras are super expensive, Jeff. I know. But, you know, once I get my money, I'll buy one for you. No biggie. I'll remember that, cousin. The best money can buy it. God, Charlie. I'm thankful Nadia turned out healthy. Nadia was the best thing to happen back then. Nadia was Mona's life. And she is so much like her mother. You were just plain creepy. What is it with you and my wife? Just a confidant when you weren't around. I always suspected you had something to hide from me. Yeah, maybe I did. Really? Yeah. So Calm down, Scott. There's no need for violence. The woman you're fighting over isn't even here. George and I realized we hadn't heard from Mona in a long time, so we decided to bring it up. Yeah. We all suddenly lost contact with her. At my request, my will is being read 10 years after my death with the hope that either A, my daughter Mona has resurfaced, or B, her case has been solved. <laughs> Sounds like Uncle George was expecting a miracle. If neither has occurred, please consult amongst yourselves at this time as to how to proceed. So you're all here now? Let's give it a shot. If the majority believes Mona is indeed dead, move on to envelope number two. If this is not the consensus, reconvene in 10 years hence for the continuation of this reading. <laughs> there is no way I'm waiting another 10 years. I could be dead. Oh. Please make your decision considering Mr. Wood's precise instructions, dead or alive. Go, Stacy. Take a pen. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff and Nadia. You have to be of legal age to participate. Okay. Charlie. Randy. Captain. So, what's your vote? Dead or alive? <laughs> blank ballot and five believe she's dead. May I proceed? Yes, please. Now I'd like to take some time to fulfill Mr. Wood's assignment. Does it relate to the will? Certainly. Then let's continue. Ballot result doesn't surprise me. It strengthens my suspicion that each one of you is a murder suspect. Excuse me? I don't understand what you're saying. I mean, all of you had a motive to kill Mona. That's ridiculous. Some kind of conspiracy? No, I'm completely lost. Randy, you know what he's talking about? Uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Technically, I'm not family anyway, and I guess I never Please really- sit down, Mrs. Jordan. Yes, you are part of this. As Mr. Woods' nurse, you tried every possible way to get close to Mr. Woods. You even wanted to divorce your husband so you could marry the old man. <laughs> wow. 
That's something I never heard. I knew it. But your idea was rejected, and you blame Mona for it. You believe she was going to prevent you from getting closer to George? You know, that's ridiculous. I never wanted to marry George. I was just his friend. Close friend, huh? <laughs> Brenda, you asked me to keep it secret, and I did. But I did it for George. I guess they all know about your affair now. Okay, I admit it, yes, George and I were intimate, but that doesn't That's mean... That's not all, Mrs. Jordan. Mona asked you to take her necklace in for appraisal. You found the necklace quite worthy. And you came up with a malicious idea. Well, I never considered it. Perhaps you were the murderer. Stacy, I thought you were on my side. That is brilliant perception, Mr. Pearson. Good job. Uh, I, you know, you're a sick family. All of you have better motives than I do. You're right, Mrs. Jordan. Stacy could have benefited from getting rid of Mona. Nonsense. After your teaching license was suspended, you decided to move in with Mr. Woods. And your plan was to manipulate him into changing his will before he died. My suspension was a setup. And yes, George was my brother and a widow for many years. He needed someone to take care of him. I don't see the harm. There was a problem, Stacy. You never considered Mona to be a part of your family because of her Middle Eastern heritage. Oh and you felt her behavior abundance. undermined the family's dignity. A wife and a daughter. And he took them away. First Florence. Now, Mona. Florence was different. She's your wife. Mona isn't real family. You only had her for a short time. 13 years! What did I do with it? I worked and I worked. Years of drugs and constant worry. I don't mind telling you. On more than one occasion, I wanted to get rid of her for you. Perhaps that is when you decided to take action. You're absolutely insane, Mr. Pearson. I'm sure George feels very disappointed in his grave. It's been more than five months. Mona probably just ran away again. Maybe she went looking for her mother. What if it's worse? What could be worse than this, George? Mona is just a mixed up kid. She only makes your life miserable. Oh, stop it. So you starved your brother and killed his adopted daughter? Oh, stop it, Charlie. Not funny. <laughs> Charlie, as a matter of fact, I can't prove your innocence in Mona's death either. I don't know what you're talking about, old man. Well, as the only offspring working in the Woods Corporation, you had the opportunity to get close to Mona. I loved Mona. I adored her. Is this some kind of confession? Calm down, Scott. Let me finish. Perhaps you did love Mona. But your appetite for money was greater than your appetite for love. For fuck's sake, who doesn't have an appetite for money? That's why we're all here. Yours was different. You controlled half of Mr. Wood's business, and you were afraid Mona was going to stand in the way of the other half after Mr. Wood's died. You're just an appointed lawyer. I could file a lawsuit against you for professional misconduct. Yes, you may. But my loyalty to serve Mr. Woods was based on his belief the inheritance should not be a celebration of what might be gained, but rather a mediation of what was lost. So what's your point? My point is, you seduced Mona into drug addiction so she would become dependent on you. You tell him this? When that didn't work, you devised a plan to kill her by overdose. <laughs> okay. So maybe I gave her drugs a couple of times, but only when she needed it. I never intentionally tried to overdose her. Never. What, Charlie? Your drugs nearly killed her a couple of times. Shut up, bitch. I think you had a reason and opportunity to kill Mona as well. Me? Not a chance. I was a good friend to Mona. Charlie may not be wrong, Catherine. You proclaim yourself a good friend, but I'm not sure everyone would agree. Scott, 
You know, right? I heard you and Mona fought hard over some issues. Scott, say something. I mean, I, I fought for you, remember? She's cheating on me. She's fucking cheating on me, and she's cheating on me with Charlie, of all people. What? I know for a fact she is. He's gone. Okay, stop. Stay there. Stay. Are you banging someone else? No. No wonder people call you a slut. I feel sorry for Uncle George taking you in. Go back to where you belong, okay? A whore's daughter is a whore too. Stop judging my family. I swear I will make your life miserable as hell. I also heard a rumor about your royal wedding. You were engaged to an English duke, but the wedding was canceled because of a blackmail attempt to reveal your own infidelity. Charlie did that to me. I knew it. No, it wasn't me that blackmailed you. All I did was hire a private investigator for Mona. So Charlie, can you help me find a private investigator? Someone who can take really good photos? For what? Keep an eye on Hubby's pecker? <laughs> Just dump him for fuck's sake. Guy doesn't even have a job. No, not him. Someone else. That's a perfect motive. Well, Mona is a vengeful woman. I can totally see her trying to blackmail Catherine. I was really upset, but I, but I never, not once, try to kill her or anyone else. Well, Mr. Pearson, according to your little theory, everyone could be the killer. But remember, the husband is always the prime suspect in a wife's murder. Of course, Charlie, I'm aware of that. Don't try to drag me into this, you son of a bitch. I was cleared, and I'm still clear. And you, you're just a lawyer, not a cop. Don't try to wear boots that don't fit. Just trying to be fair about this, Scott, so let's see if this little investigation takes root. Whatever. But I'm innocent. Well, as a small-time artist, you just couldn't handle the fact that your work had been costly rejected. Your anger and frustration boiled over, and eventually you became an abusive husband. Fuck you, Pearson! I don't have to stand here and listen to these false accusations. I already told you there was someone else actually involved in her disappearance. You know who this guy is? No. Casper? Well, that's kind of new to me. Have you all heard about this before? No. no. I think I killed my mother. I guess I got tired of being ignored by my mom. She always used to make me sit outside and wait or watch out for my dad. So, why would your mother ask you to do such a thing? Um, when the man came? What man? I don't remember exactly, but I was shocked by what I'd done. What are you doing here, baby? Did you drop the gun, Nadia? I have partial amnesia, so some of my memories mixed up and lost. Sweetie, your daddy never had a gun, okay? Your brain is just 
a little messed up from being traumatized from losing your mother at such a young age. Ask your Uncle Randy. He's a psychologist. Your father may be right about this, Nadia. Children often alter the events of a traumatic experience to cope with the guilt and loss that they feel. They will even blame themselves. Oh my even... God, I'm so bored. Can we move on, please? Seriously, else I'm gonna quit. Yeah, me too. I have to say that I am just very disappointed in all of this as well. <laughs> they have a point, Mr. Pearson. <laughs> Everyone has a, a, a motive, but that's not gonna make the will go away. What do you think, Doc? I don't think this guy's doing all this for Uncle George, but for his big, fat ego. I hope you're not a part of his game. Of course not. Oh, by the way, I can tell you who's Casper. Yep. Oh, never mind. I meant the Casper from the Halloween party, N not the kidnapper. <gasps> What's going on? It's just this room. Look, there's light outside. Can someone please turn on the lights? Oh. <gasps> Sorry. He's been poisoned. Damn it. Come on, Charlie, get up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I, I just thought about that uh, that movie, Clue. Anybody see that one? Drop it, Charlie. Uh. Mr. Pearson, if you're not going to read the will tonight, I think we all should leave. I hope this wasn't George's idea. Honestly. Okay. Number two. To qualify as a beneficiary of my estate, each person summoned must re meet my Christian values by meeting the following three criteria. Oh, George went to church and made his donations, but I never thought he upheld his values so strongly. One, have reached the age of 18. Two, upheld their sacred marriage vows. What? How can George insist on being faithful in marriage? He certainly wasn't. Only you would know that, Mrs. Jordan. Brenda, George was widowed at the time, so technically you were the only one cheating. Guess I'm out. Yeah, don't worry. I don't think you were ever in. You've already got the cabin. What more do you want? Fuck, people. Let the damn lawyer finish. Three have no criminal record. Oh, another one bites the dust. I wasn't actually prosecuted. It was a setup. I should have told George about it. Too late. Drunk driving is a silly thing. I mean, everyone does it. I don't think drunk driving is a crime. Yeah, I'm pretty sure attacking a cop the way you did is. Shut up, Charlie. I don't know why you always try to put me down. First you ruined my marriage, I and now you- I that wasn't me. Mr. Pearson, they'll argue all night if you let them. Yeah, just move on, Mr. Lawyer. If a beneficiary is deceased as of this reading, the money will not pass off to their offspring. Can't argue with that. To my son-in-law, Scott Winter. If Scott has remained unmarried and conforms to the aforementioned criteria, he will act as trustee of my entire estate to be held in trust for Nadia until her 18th birthday. Additional criteria will follow. Everything? Everything? Oh, that is so uncool. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't think he will hold it for Nadia. He will if it's stipulated in the will. I'll contest this. That's the way the will was structured. Before we make any ranch decisions, let's just read through the rest of the instructions. There's $20 million at stake, plus that mansion. We need to clear the air. Yes, we want this all up front, right? Let's see. If Scott had anything to do with Mona's disappearance, he'd be out too. For God's sake, people, that investigation was over 10 years ago. I mean, come on, why are we going to bring up this crap right now? I told you, the police never found any evidence against me. Case closed. Well, George was very dissatisfied with that police investigation. Total incompetence. 
I need to see Detective Beckman immediately. I'm right here, Mr. Woods. This is my new partner, Detective Thompson. Have you gotten anywhere, Detective? George, we've all but closed the case. Your daughter probably left of her own free will. Look at her husband again. It's been done. My son-in-law had motive and the means and had been abusive in the past. We've been over all this before, George, but without a body, we can't press charges against your son-in-law or anyone else. At least go back out to the house and take another look. Maybe you missed something. We did our investigation. No body, no weapon, no sign of a struggle. And your daughter's history would suggest that another man... Follow him! Do something, damn it! We can't waste resources following every one of your disgraceful relatives, Mr. Woods. We'll let you know if something develops. Maybe I can go back out to the house, and I can look around and see what I can find. Don't piss on my sidewalk, kid. I'm the lead here. Sorry. Sorry. Now, would you excuse us? And that's how you handle irate relatives. We call the shots. We're the law. You can't let these rich pricks bully you. What are you talking about, Stacy? The detectives literally showed up on my door on several occasions after Mona's disappearance. So you're saying it's been more than three months? Uh-huh. Have you heard anything since? No. It's clear. We'll be in touch. So, you reported your wife missing three months after she disappeared? I thought she would come back. I don't think that's a legit answer. Hey, shut the fuck up. You're just trying to pin this on me because I'll have the inheritance. I told you that asshole she was shagging took your dear Mona. End of story. Let's say this Casper, whoever, ran off with your wife. And why doesn't he show up tonight, hmm? We're talking about winning the lottery here. Well... I don't know. Maybe that guy's already here. That guy could be you, Charlie. Me? Then why would I kill her? She's my ticket. Well, it's like the lawyer said. You're greedy. You thought you would plunder Mr. Wood's entire estate. Unfortunately, the old man disappointed you. You're not fooling me. I knew the old man better than anyone. I don't know about the rest of you, but the police never came to interview me. I know things, stuff you'd rather forget. Catherine, you might remember as well. Yeah, Mona swore to secrecy, but I don't know what happened. I, I was never good at keeping secrets, but I did. Mona? Are you all right? He has a gun. He said he's gonna kill me. But please just don't tell anyone. It'll only make things worse. I'm scared, but I'm more scared for Nadia. You can always go back to George, Mona. I know he'll accept you. And he loves Nadia too. I've hurt him so bad. I said I'd never go back for his money or go back and stay with him. Please, just leave. I don't know if you two are lying or if Mona dressed it up to sucker you guys. I told you I never had a gun. But you reported your wife missing three months later. We had plenty of time to clean up and ditch the gun. I've said this like a trillion times. And for the trillionth time, there was no evidence against me. Hey, what's your take on this, Doc? Say something, will you? I wish I could, but I barely spoke to Mona. Hey, hey, don't try to drag Randy into this, you asshole. He's the one whose reputation matters. And again, we've gone too far discussing issues that are irrelevant. But we can't let Scott get away with this. There's too much at stake. We're getting nowhere. 
I suggest we all calm down. Everyone take a break. Go outside to have a drink, do something. Go, all of you. I'll call you back after 30 minutes. I thought we were an alliance. All of a sudden we start going against each other because of that damn will? I mean, 20 million dollars. What are you gonna do with that kind of money? I'll save it for Nadia. I'm just a trustee. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you got the last laugh. Remember I did you a big favor back then? You mean I was the one who kept you in this world? Uncle George was diagnosed with lung cancer. He could die soon. What's that got to do with me? The old man overheard the rumors about you abusing Mona. He asked me to see if it was true. If my words reflect badly on you, then, well, you're out of the will. Okay. So what am I supposed to do about it? I think I deserve some of your share. Well, George never ended up believing any of those accusations. Let's have a talk. Come on, Kat. I didn't blackmail you. You know it. Okay. I wish I could fix it. I don't give a damn. Do you understand why George let Scott be the trustee? I thought I didn't even like him. I don't know. I hope it wasn't Alzheimer's or something. I thought. George was pretty aware before he died. Yeah, me too. Just come in. Hey, buddy. Oh, what can I say? I am so happy to see you after all these crazy years. Same here. So, uh, you bring what I asked? Of course. Don't I always take care of your needs? Please, be my guest. Right. Let's see here. Her father has helped me get involved with politics. What's this all about? I am running for state senator next year. Good for you. <laughs> and I suppose you want to snatch some cash for your campaign, huh? That's why I'm here. Yeah, too bad. I think that son of a bitch is gonna get all the money. I think Uncle George is setting someone up. Not us? Me? No. I can take care of myself. Uh, come on, Randy. You took care of me when I was a kid. I gave you the inside scoop. You masterminded it. So how about we take care of each other like the good old days, huh? I, uh... uh I got this plan. Hey, no, Charlie. We had our fun when we were kids, but I'm a doctor now, and soon to be elected official. 
the money will help, but I have to do everything legally. I have my reputation to protect. <laughs> no, no. Randy, you're taking this the wrong way. Everything I do is perfectly legal. Come here, pal. So, uh, looks like your dad's gonna get all that money for you. I don't care. No, I'm sure my grandma's gonna be real pissed about that. Okay, you know, Nadia, when... You really shocked me when you said you thought you killed your mom. Not that I think you did. I mean, come on, you were six years old and way too small to handle a gun. I have this weird dream, and I think that it might mean something. it might have something to do with the murder. <laughs> well, maybe your dream's trying to tell you something. Maybe, maybe you saw the murderer. Has anyone seen Charlie? He's probably hiding somewhere and drawing his blow. Yeah, whatever he snorted this time, he's not gonna wake up anytime soon. Uh, why don't we just all move on and someone can explain it to him later? So, we all agree to continue? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. All right. In order to continue with the will, I have a small test for Nadia, my darling granddaughter. Her answer will determine whether or not her father, Scott Winter, earns my trust. What kind of twisted treasure hunt is this? That's the necklace I had appraised for Mona. I got a very good price from a friend, but she never sold it. Mona would have taken her family treasure with her. So what's this? Maybe she came back and left it with Uncle George, but then why deceive Nadia and everyone here? That would be a little unusual and unlikely. I understand. You all have opinions about the necklace, but may I continue the reading? Sure. Nadia, come over here, please. Jeff, you too. Nadia, my beloved granddaughter, here is my question. Is this your mother's necklace? What the hell is the old man doing? Scott, please let Nadia answer the question. Failure to comply will result in forfeiting your responsibilities as trustee. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing, Doc? The question was for Nadia, not for you. No, this is not my mom's necklace. Are you sure? Yes, I saw my mom's necklace at home. At home? At home? I don't believe this. George gave Mona that necklace for her 18th birthday. She loved that necklace dearly. You said Mona ran away. Why would she leave her family legacy behind? You're wrong about this, Nadia. Your, your mother's necklace, it, it's not at home. I mean, she took all of the jewelry with her. I know, it looks identical. Reminds me of my grandpa and my mom so much. What are you doing here, baby? Mommy, 
You're so beautiful. Thank you, my sweet baby. Mommy, can I wear your necklace sometime? Of course you can, but maybe when you get a little bit bigger, okay? <laughs> and my grandpa said the same thing to me. You must miss your mama, Nadia. I know I do. Uh-huh. I like my mom's necklace too, but she wouldn't let me wear it. You're a bit too young for jewelry, darling, huh? You know, that was a gift from your mother's mother. We'll get you one when you get older, okay? Nadia, if you said that the necklaces look identical, how can you be sure that this one isn't your mother's necklace? I just remember she left it at home. Are you sure about this, Nadia? Uh-huh. Yay, another ancient mystery. Stop it, Jeff. I feel totally dumbfounded. Just to be clear, you're certain this is not your mother's necklace? Yes, I think so. I do. Thank you. Okay, now we need everyone present to continue. Can someone please find Charlie and bring him back here? Yeah, I'll go. Thank you, Jeff. Charlie wasn't in his room. I checked the other rooms, but... Well, he needs to be present for us to continue, so let's find him, folks. Uncle Charlie's ride is sweet. I know. Who else in our family would drive a Porsche? Is it open? Uh, yeah. Get in. You know, if I can find the keys, I can drive you around like Miss Daisy. Don't you think it's a little too late to go for a drive, Jeff? Give me the one. Go! Come on, go. What happened? <gasps> Don't look at me! Uncle Randy, are they okay? No. They're both gone. <sighs> no, 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 she's still breathing, she's still alive! Is she? Let's get her to her room, come on, quick. We need to call the police. 
or an ambulance or something. There's no signal out here. How about using the house phone? Oh, that's right. I disconnect the line during the off season. Somebody should just drive until they get a signal. No. No one leaves. Give me 10 minutes, I'll meet y'all in the living room. What about my grandma? Stay with her, son. Hello, Scott. Hungry? What? Your daughter's answer caught my attention. Caught my attention too, Doc. What are you trying to say? I think you had something to do with your wife's disappearance. <laughs> Another accusation. Let's hear it. It's possible that you killed your wife, took her necklace, and stashed it at home. Why would I take the necklace if I had killed Mona? Because you didn't want her body identified. The necklace is unique. What if her body were discovered one day? I know you're a psychologist, mm. but your theory doesn't hold water, Doc. Mona's case was closed. Ah, uh, but a new case has been opened. What new case? Charlie may have found something on you, so you killed him. I didn't kill Charlie. Well, if you want to avoid being accused, you would need to shift the blame to others with stronger motive. Hey. Hey. How's your grandma? At least she's still alive. Mm-hmm. Hey. Do you mind if I ask you something? No, go ahead. Okay, are you sure that that's not your mom's necklace? I mean- Well, I just know it. Okay, but how? Because I saw my mom's necklace at home. Well, are you sure? Like, super sure? Yes, I'm positive. It was that afternoon, sometime after my mom went missing, seen it lately? No. Okay, well then it's possible that your grandpa got the necklace, brought it back here, and your answer would be wrong. I don't care. Maybe my dad felt disappointed. I don't care about this stupid inheritance. Charlie was obviously poisoned. That's all I can tell from a quick glance. I have seen cyanide do that in some of my suit cases. Can you think of anyone who could have done this? Oh God. Stacy was a chemistry teacher. She'd know. Then why was she attacked? Maybe Charlie fought back before he died. Hmm. Her background? Stacy was accused of being in possession of a controlled substance while she was a teacher. Charlie and his big mouth told everyone about that. The case against her was dropped. Well, it doesn't matter. The damage was done.
then... Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Catherine did it. She disappeared for no reason, and she was gone for a really long time. <laughs> Go on. Okay, well, Charlie wrecked her life. But the poor thing's still unmarried. I'm sure she'll never get over that disappointment. How about Stacy? Well, maybe Catherine didn't do it alone. She relies on Stacy for a lot, you know. So you think they did it together? Well, Stacy could have come to help Catherine, but maybe Stacy was just a little too old to escape like Catherine. Man, my parents are so messed up. Yeah, mine were too. You know, sometimes I'm glad they're gone just so I don't have to deal with it. I wonder why Uncle Charlie never got married. Maybe he knew it was more trouble than it's worth. You know, the funny thing is, he's the only one that ever really talked to us. I don't like my parents so much. They ignore me all the time. Me too, but Uncle Charlie is nice. Uncle Charlie, can we see your photo? Hey guys. Uh, no, this is uh, not for little people, but uh, hey, how about I take an instant picture of you two? Yeah. Okay. Say cheese. Cheese. Okay, now, you have to do this so the picture dries fast, okay? There you go. Can I try it, Jeff? Hey, you guys take turns, all right? You uh, let Nadia have a turn. There you go. All right, hey, kids, let's go inside, all right? It's getting a little chilly. Come on, let's go. You seem to remember a lot. Yeah. His death must have jogged my memory or something. Maybe. Hey, do you still have the envelope from Uncle Charlie's car? Yeah. Do you think we should open it or give it to Mr. Pearson? You're the detective? Maybe we should give it to Mr. Pearson. Come on, let's go. Someone saw you and Charlie talking by the parking lot. What were you discussing? He was asking me about that Halloween party. Hey, Scott. You remember that Halloween party? What the hell's going on here? You're a coward, Scott. You've been ignoring her all this time? I'm not surprised what she's been doing behind your back. Oh, yeah? Why are you so concerned about my wife, huh? What, are you trying to get yourself laid, you son of a bitch? Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, okay. Fuck you, no. Charlie. Fuck you, man. Get out of me. Cool costume. I fuck got you. Asshole. All right, all right. Fuck you, Charlie. Fuck you, your arse sucks. your car's gas tank, hey, you son of a bitch. Fuck you. So you think your wife and Charlie were having an affair? I did, but I never got a chance to prove it. Anything else give cause for suspicion? He phoned me before I came up here. There's something about Mona's photo. I haven't seen anything yet. But... Uncle Randy. What are you doing in here? Hey guys, I just came to see if she's all right. Well, is she okay? She should be fine. That's a relief. She's all I got left. But she is almost 70 years old. You just never know. 
but I can stay and watch over her if you two want to go out. Oh, uh, that's okay. We'll stay here, but thanks, Uncle Randy. But Mr. Pearson does want to speak with you both. Okay. I'll go first. Nadia can stay here. Charlie was a bleeping fucked <laughs> He was up to no good. Stacy found out something and he tried to kill her. He was probably high at the time and OD'd or something. Anything else? <laughs> no. Other than Charlie being a bleeping fuck. <laughs> no. You can trust me, Nadia. I'm a psychologist. I've seen many cases like yours. Maybe I can help you get your memory back. Tell me, what did you see? I saw my mom's happy face and her finger over her lips. Mr. Pearson? Yeah, come in, kid. Hey. How's your grandma? Uh, she's fine, she's fine. I, uh, I left her with Nadia and Uncle Randy. Oh, good, good. Look, I understand you and Nadia are not 18 yet. I don't see anything suspicious about you, but I got asked. Well, I, uh, I probably shouldn't have done this without permission, but I did. So there's something you want to talk about? Well, uh, Nadia and I found this in Uncle Charlie's car. And I also found this. So, you're telling me that your mother looked happier when this man came over. Can you describe him? I wish I could, but I don't remember. Right. Right. Memory loss. But I have this weird dream. My mom hands me a toy Casper and says it's a secret between us. Maybe that's a message from your mother. She wants you to keep her secret. It makes no difference. I don't even remember anyway. Here's the key to my car. Drive until you get a signal. What, what about my grandma? I'll take care of her son, don't worry. We'll be back soon. Why would you tell them that your mother's necklace is at home? I told them the truth. For God's sake, that is not the truth. We don't have your mom's necklace at home, sweetie. But I saw it. When? After mom went missing. Then where is it? I don't know. I haven't checked it for a long time. See? I told you. You have problems remembering things. Your brain is just a little messed up, sweetie. No, not this time. Yeah, right. Dad? Did you kill Uncle Charlie? No, I didn't. Why do you think that I would kill Charlie? Why would you ask me something so stupid? I don't know why you called me back for more of this interrogation nonsense. What next? Waterboarding? I told you all I know, Mr. P. Very well, Catherine. I think I have enough. Thank you. If you don't mind, could you get Randy for me? I'd appreciate it. I thought we were done here. I told you everything I knew. I just want to clarify a couple of things, Randy. 
So you think it was poison, right? Yes. And the more I think about it, the more I suspect it was Stacy. I've heard that accusation. But I'm wondering what else made Stacy hate Charlie so much she eventually killed him. Charlie helped George run the business, but he lost half the money. Stacy never forgave him for that. Besides, Charlie never paid her the proper respect. Okay, but why'd she wait so long to take action? Stacy is a cynical but intelligent woman. I imagine she was waiting for the right opportunity. Today was that day. I'll see. She probably underestimated the time it took for the poison to take effect, and Charlie struck her hard as he went down. Any others that may be involved? No. Why? Curious. Well, I could put Scott into that hat, but he has his own terrible shit to deal with. Well, what do you mean by terrible shit? I just found out that Scott may have killed his wife in front of his own daughter. And how did you find that out? I just spoke with Nadia. I respect your profession, doctor, so tell me. What's your theory? It's a defense mechanism. Children often erase bad memories to protect themselves from the truth. I believe Nadia saw the killer. And the most likely killer was Scott. Grandma disappeared. Hey, Scott, where's everyone? Don't ask me. I'm not interested in your crazy family. And your daughter, Nadia? Interested in her? Why are you suddenly so concerned about my daughter? I was just speaking with her in Stacy's room, and now both women have disappeared. Well, women like to play hide and seek. Like my wife. You know? Right. Hey, Scott. There's a friend of mine who's an art collector. She's interested in seeing some of your paintings. Maybe I can introduce you both someday. Forget it, Doc. I don't think your friends are going to be interested in mingling with a mediocre artist like me. Oh, don't be so hard on yourself, Scott. You used to be a great artist. <laughs> now, that was a long time ago. Well, you can pursue your art again once you receive the inheritance. I just hope nothing turns up to spoil your future. What do you mean? Nadia saw you murder Mona. That's fucking insane! Nadia is suffering from post-traumatic stress. She doesn't remember events clearly, but she remembers enough to make me suspicious of you. That's even more ridiculous! And there's always a necklace. All right, no more crap, Doc. Got it? Well, maybe there is something I can do to help you. All right, folks. This is the last meeting before we return home. I never should have come here. I should have known better. Come on, Nadia, we're leaving. Your actions could be perceived as fleeing the scene of a crime, Scott. Not if I didn't do anything. Unless you want to be considered a prime suspect, I suggest all of you stay put. Now, everyone put your hands on your knees and leave them there. Now, 
That's good. Now then, we need to straighten out this will before someone else ends up dead. I'm gonna read through Mr. Wood's will until we find the last qualified beneficiary. But it's all about Scott and his family. You know what, I feel used. I feel used too. At least I'm still alive. Before we finish the will, we should discuss Charlie's death. I think these two events are highly related. Just to remind everyone, this is the contingency for letter three. Where's Stacy? Nadia, my dear granddaughter, I know you have already given your answer. Now I want to tell you whether your answer is true or false is completely irrelevant. But I'd like to trace the necklace's journey and then you will know what I'm talking about. Years ago, I found a fine jeweler to make a counterfeit. Then I gave this copy to your mother for her 18th birthday. I believe your mother never found out that the necklace I gave to her was not her family's legacy, but a replica. After your mother went missing, for a while I thought she would have gone with her fake family treasure. Hmm, nicely done. But Nadia, you surprised me. I liked my mom's necklace too, but she wouldn't let me wear it. You're a bit too young for jewelry, darling, huh? Mm. You know, that was a gift from your mother's mother. Uh, we'll get you one when you get older, okay? But Grandpa, Mama left the necklace at home. Can I wear it if she's never coming back? From that moment, I began to think that your father must have killed your mother. Because I believed your mother would never have left her family treasure behind. <sighs> so I drew this 10-year will for two reasons. One, to validate my assumption about your father. Two, to give you time to grow strong and mature enough to bring justice down on the man who killed your mother. Dad? Come on, Scott. Your daughter saw you. Just let it go. God will accept your confession, Scott. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I did. I killed Lana. But, but it was an accident. Nadia, what are you doing out here? Mama told me to. That was the last day I saw my mom alive. Um, teriyaki chicken? Okay, I can make that for you. You let me know if you see your daddy's car coming, okay, baby? I guess I felt angry about this for a long time, so I decided not to warn my mom. All right, well, come inside, baby. It's getting cold out here. After my dad went into the house, Mona. Mona, open the door. Open it. Mona, open this fucking door. You dirty fucking slut. I know you have someone in there. Open this. Open this door. No, please don't. 
Get away from me, you filthy cunt! She's gonna be okay, all right? I promise you, she's gonna be okay. It's just, it's just an accident. I pro Nadia! I was so scared. I guess I passed out on the street. Fear, the anger, it was too much. I woke up in the hospital the next day and I couldn't remember what happened. It's so sad. Nadia, I'm really sorry. Well... It looks like I'm the last qualified trustee in this room. Don't spend the money yet, Randy. I'm not finished. Now it's time to talk about Charlie's death. Well, we already found the killer in the house. Dad? Did you kill Uncle Charlie? No. No. Who then? That's a good question. For a while, I considered the three women. Mr. Pearson, please, we've been through this, haven't we? Mr. Pearson, Charlie threatened to tell my husband about the affair, but by that time, my husband had already passed, so why would I even care? What about Stacy? Oh, wait. I saw her put some mysterious powder in a drink. Another witness. Stacy was the prime suspect at the time of my interrogations. This button made me change my mind. We found it near Charlie's dead body. I believe Charlie pulled it from the killer. Just because I'm missing a button does not make me a killer, Pearson. No wonder this pop his ass wanted to see me. Oh boy, I can't take another joke like this. No, it... that's not a joke. I must say I felt surprised myself. Hey, wait, wait, okay. Okay, we, we all want to know how this played out, but you gotta tell us why you think Randy is the murderer. Well, during our first break, I believe Randy killed Charlie, but he didn't have time to move the body from his room because I called you all back for the meeting. Hey, Randy, time to go. It was Jeff who found Randy's door locked. The only room that was locked. Charlie? Charlie wasn't in his room. I checked the other rooms, but... Well, he needs to be present for us to continue, so let's find him, folks. 
After I sent everyone to look for Charlie, Randy found his opportunity to dump the body into the storage room. Stacy, I'm right here. Your head is injured. You don't remember clearly. It wasn't me, Stacy. You tripped over your own feet. I may be too old to remember a poem, but I'm young enough to remember who tried to murder me. Bastard! Oh no. Oh no, don't you dare try to cover this up. We all saw you put the powder in that drink. You poisoned Charlie, didn't you? That was a sedative for myself. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, just because I am the next beneficiary, you are all setting me up. But there is one small problem in your little game. You all have motives, and I don't. That would be my conclusion. Till I saw this picture. The camera log on the back of the picture says it was taken the same date and time as the Halloween party. Like the one Stacy took. Oh. You probably remember when the lights mysteriously went out. That's when somebody mentioned that notorious name, Casper. Oh, by the way, I can tell you who's Casper. <gasps> it's been brought to my attention that you and Charlie had some kind of argument. Charlie asked me about the Casper thing. Tell me who Casper was at the party. Why do you even care? Just want to know. <laughs> you don't think he's Mona's Casper, do you? Why not? Because, Charlie, they're not the same person. R Randy's a golden boy. I don't know who the heck Mona slept with. And Scott's confession added more. He was asking me about that Halloween party. Hey, Scott. Remember that Halloween party? <sighs> Not really. Why? Didn't Randy disappear for about an hour? Wait, I thought he got drunk and you drove him home. Charlie didn't believe Randy and Casper were just a simple coincidence. Catherine said it all. I wasn't Mona's Casper. You can't accuse me just because I wore a Casper costume. You're right. I can't judge you by what you wore, but...
Charlie. Can we see your photo? Hey, guys. So, who is this guy? It's none of your business. I can't believe you took a picture of us. Are you insane? Hey, I, uh... Oh, I got this plan. Hey, no, Charlie. We had our fun when we were kids, but I'm a doctor now and soon to be elected official. The money will help, but I have to do everything legally. I have my reputation to protect. No, no, no. Randy, you're taking this the wrong way. Everything I do is perfectly legal. Come here, pal. Listen, Scott has been using his tired out Mona kidnapping story for way too long. The sooner everyone knows he killed Mona, the sooner he goes to jail. Mm. It's time to come clean, Randolph. You need to fess up to being Mona's boy toy. That way we'll kick the son of a bitch out of this game altogether. How do you... How do you know that man was me? I use my expertise. All right. But how are you going to prove it? I got something solid. Liar. Not this time. Then show me. Not until you say yes. And knock myself out of contention for the will? Uh, no. Get rid of Scott and I'll split the estate 70-30 with you. Together. I get you. But if it gets out that I screwed my fucking cousin, <laughs> I'll be out of the race. Uh, your fucking adopted cousin. I don't think my wife and in-laws would understand. Randy. <laughs> Randy, I, uh... I'm losing my patience, Randy. Be realistic. If you don't confess, I'll do it for you. You intimidate me. <laughs> no. No. I... I advise you. Time to go. Well, did anyone actually call the police? I did. They're on their way. Catherine is right. You need evidence, Mr. Lawyer. You can't draw conclusions based on your crazy imagination. 
Well, my assumption is based on this. This means nothing, you old fool. Charlie probably just wrote that to incriminate me in his little scheme. That's hardly evidence. I mean, the woman in the photo is definitely Mona, but the man, I mean, you can't see his face. He's turned away from the camera. Precisely. Again, thank you, Catherine. Now, I guess it's time to return to the will. Jeff? It's you in the photo, Randy. And I can prove it. Please, be my guest. And when you fail, I will gladly accept your humble apology. As Catherine stated, the man's turned away from the camera, so we can't make out his face. But if you look in the right spot, there's a mirror. Of course, the photo is way too small to actually see whose face it is. But if you were to simply download a magnifying glass app and use it on the photo, and if you zoom in, well, that looks like Randy to me. Randy, I don't believe this. Such a shame. You're Casper. Scott. You're fucking Casper. You're fucking Casper. I swore that I would kill the man that she betrayed me for. Scott. I'm sorry. Be sorry for the woman who died for you. You fuck. You fuck. Fuck, fuck you. God, fuck you. Scott, there. You don't understand. There is more. No. You deserve to die. Your fortune or death. Choose death. Nadia.
The next list you tested is the original. Mr. Woods wanted it passed on to you, as promised. Take it. Jeff, you want to get in here and help me up for a sec? Yeah. Dude, do you ever hear from that foxy cousin of yours? What was her name? Lani L Lydia. Nadia. Why do you ask? Uh, I just saw on the news, some girl went missing last night and reminded me of your cousin getting all that money and disappearing. Anybody home? Nadia, where have you been? I was in New Zealand, actually. It was beautiful, just like you said. Did you take pictures? Well, no. Someone didn't buy me a camera. Oof. Don't ask me now. Because I'm broke, and that's no joke. I figured as much. George would say thanks, kiddo. Thanks. <laughs> 